Hi, Soul Family. Um, I'm redoing today's reading. I'm not certain if this one is going to be the one you're going to see, but I'm, uh, I'm doing it again for personal reasons. Um, my dreams were really, really explosive last night. Spirit said that all lies and deception would be uncovered and the truth was going to be revealed and and it's not what you expect and holy shit. Um, you know, I worked with a client yesterday and I've been working with her for quite a while and the person that she's dealing with is in a really toxic environment. I'm not passing judgment on him. I don't know that... that Specifically that he is, well, he's become a predator of sorts to her. He's toxic to her, but it may be because of the people he's choosing to be around and the fact that, that that's his choice to do that means he's choosing to do this to her as well. And it's a narcissistic situation. She's struggling to stay in the light and move forward. The information was to walk away, detach, you know, don't jump in that mud pool. Um, he's trying to tell her he's there trying to help other people. They don't want help. They don't want to be helped. They think they're fine. But he thinks he's going to jump in there and try and change things around. But what's been happening instead is he's being pulled in. And he's become like them. And so she's been told to let go and detach. It's really clear from the outside to watch, but it's very difficult when it's you. Because you know this person has got decent qualities and... He even said, you'll, you'll see that I was trying to help these people. But the problem is, you don't jump into a cis pole to help people that don't want. They're not asking for your help. They like it. Some people don't see it as a cesspool. Some people like that lifestyle. But it's toxic for her, and it's toxic for him. And so now he's been pulled into this. So she says, but I had a dream. And in the dream, he came to me, and he said, I'm in the middle of a transformation you know, stick with it. And she says, and I didn't tell him about the dream. And a few days later, he did it. And I said, she goes, so that must mean that I'm supposed to stay with him. And I said, no, it doesn't. It means you had a dream that showed you what was coming. So on one hand, it's pretty cool because you have prophetic dreams. And you can see that spirit's trying to guide you. Your higher self is trying to show you. This is what you saw. Then it happened. All you saw in that dream was that he was going to come and tell you this. Spirit wasn't telling you he's telling you the truth. Spirit wasn't telling you everything that was going on in the background. And Spirit wasn't telling you that this is where you need to be. You were just simply shown what was about to happen. I said, I've done that too. It's very, very dangerous for us to assume that because we saw something in a dream, this is what it's going to mean. Everyone has free will choices. And yes, that may play out and you may see that. But it doesn't mean necessarily what you think it means what someone says to you is very different than what someone does so that's all I'm going to say about my dream I don't want to talk about it um, I feel that it's extremely flamboyant and very it's rough it's uh not my choice, but um, I want to be careful to respect other people's choices and privacy, and uh, so I'm choosing to redo the reading, and uh, I'm asking for clarity myself, so I'm asking right now for all of us, I've only worked for a bit today, and here I am taking time off again to redo this entire reading. The reading was amazing, it was in depth, but... Um, I do recognize that I'm very passionate, and I know Spirit uses it, but, but sometimes I, I have to pull things back. Um, and the fact that I'm thinking about it, right, and second-guessing myself is enough to make me stop. If you're not clear on something, if you're not certain that something should be said or sent out, don't do it. I will tell you this morning that my landlord, um, I'm, I'm staging right now because I'm asking for all, all this to go away. I want us to start our reading um, with clarity and no negative energy here within us. Um, it's going to be a multiple choice 
uh, all zodiac sign pick an item and uh, you know what I can't do pick an item I, I did it this morning oh maybe I'll do rings I'll do rings I have four rings sitting here and I'll use them oh, come on let go will you already I use the four rings I have the reading and I'm keeping it and uh, I'm just gonna wait until later to see whether I should release it but as I said you know, when you're higher self, when, when you do something, even if it is flamboyant, even sometimes I've released things that were really, you know, heavy. I have removed a couple of videos after I've released them, thinking about it and realizing, you know, I don't want to um, hold that toxic energy, even though the intention was good and the message was good at the time. Sometimes I pulled things back. So this particular thing I feel is um, too toxic to send out. And if I make a mistake, sometimes things can't be undone. So I'm erring on the side of um, caution. So the rings that you're going to choose from are as follows. Let me just let this smoke around. Okay. So we have an amethyst ring set in silver. It's actually tarnished because I haven't worn it. Um... I think my little sister got it and then my mom had it and gave it to me. Or maybe my mom had it and gave it to me and I gave it to my daughter and I got it back. I can't remember. But it's filigree. It's fancy. Amethyst is for calming and for protection. It needs to be cleaned. It's dirty. Um, this one, I was helping someone move and it was, I found it on the floor of their storage unit. And I asked them about it and they said, oh, I don't know who that is. You can have it. And I looked it up and... Uh, it's, this is rose gold, and this is actually, I, I found it, I can't, I'm not going to remember it right now, but this, it's actually the, the face of, a, of a, um, an ancient one. But when I looked at this ring, what I see are the three seeds, one, two, three, and this one's sprouting. So to me, it's about growth and new beginnings. But you can see the face, see the eyebrows and the eyes, and this is its mouth and its nose and So that's also amethyst. And then we have, oh, my girlfriend Erica gave me this. My girlfriend Erica from uh, Sturgeon Bay. She doesn't live there anymore, but she's an artist. She gave this to me. It's black obsidian. It's set in silver, but it's also tarnished because it's too big for me. It always fell off my fingers. So I, I keep it here for the, um, for the crystal's energy. It's protection, grounding. And then we have the carnelian which I wear all the time on my pointer finger and actually on my thumb. <laughs> Carnelian and uh, it's wrapped in two different types of brass and copper. So it's healing, very healing. It's also got the three seeds, right? Three, the number three, full circle completion. Um, message that I'm getting from this um, and it goes with the other one as well and let me look and see if there's three in here how many crystals are set one no okay so it's just this one and the one here um, what I'm getting from the when I'm looking at the seeds is never underestimate the power of planting a seed so somebody can plant a seed like a thought into your head and grow into something powerful. It can be positive or it can be very, very negative. That's why it's very important for me that what I was shown in my dream, I'm very careful uh, before I send it out because as I said about that, um, I'm going to shuffle here while we think about these four. So those are there. Those are there. Those they are. So this is... Um, Fire, water, air, earth, and whatever else you want to choose it to be. So never underestimate the power of planting a seed. So if uh, it's kind of like what I was saying about gossip, right? And not knowing something and don't listen to gossip. And if you aren't 100% certain, and if you can't verify it, don't assume. Because it can be extremely damaging. The story about the fellow who 
was being um, sued in court for things that he said, and he, the judge, you know, told him to write everything down and cut it up into a bunch of pieces and spread it over the city. And when he came back, the next day he would pronounce judgment, make his decision. So he did it, and the guy came. I know I've told this story a few times, but I'm telling it again. Um, when he came back, the judge said, you know, you know, you know, and the guy didn't see anything wrong with what he had done. He didn't think he'd done anything. It wasn't him that had done anything. He was just repeating what he was told. And the judge said, okay, before I pass judgment, he goes, did you do what I asked you to do? And the guy said, yes. And he says, I want you to go back now, and I want you to pick up all those pieces that you spread throughout the city, and then I want you to tape them all back together and then bring it to me, and then I'll tell you what I've decided. And the guy says, I can't do that. That's ridiculous. That's impossible. They've blown all over the city. And the judge says, exactly, precisely. You have no idea the, the damage that your words have caused. So at this time, the emphasis is about being very, very careful about the words that you speak and the words that you choose to repeat, especially if you don't know what you're talking about, right? If you weren't there firsthand to witness it. I saw it in a dream. Yeah, I saw really crystal clear things in a dream last night too. And, and I'm a remote viewer and I, and I have very, very uh, prophetic dreams and they, they do happen in front of me. And if this comes to be, you know, I will deal with it. And uh, Spirit did tell us, however, that, that, that information was going to be coming to light. No secrets were going to be, um, all secrets going to be, be uncovered. Any lies, deception, cheating, manipulation was going to be coming to the surface, coming to light. They would do it in whatever way they needed to do it. If it would come in a dream, if it would come in, you know, conversation, if you caught somebody you know, found something in a text message, who knows, whatever way spirit's going to make sure it happened. Well, for me, they showed me in a dream. So the information is, I have it. It's clear. And uh, I reserve judgment until I hear what that person has to say. It looks really bad. And it may have made my decisions for me. And that's what spirit said would happen. And, you know, a lot of times we think we want something and we know we want something and we've asked for it and we can manifest things. But spirit says, are you sure what you want? Because remember the message we got, there's an offer that's going to be made and there's things that you don't know. And what you don't know may be more than you're willing to deal with. Maybe a risk, it may be a lifestyle, whatever it is, there's something been concealed from you. And we'll, we'll make sure that you're safe. Remember yesterday, we were told, don't worry, we're going to make sure that you're safe. So, I'm going to sneeze, sorry. <coughs> it's a sage. <coughs> Good, clearing. Um, but, uh, so you may be uh, getting information like I did. And uh, like I said, I'll, I'll let you have your, you know, speak your piece. But the information's already been given to me, so we'll see. And, uh, I'm not talking because I don't know 100% the facts and I don't want to be damaging to other people. So, but you know, sometimes we ask spirit for something and spirit says, you know, you don't, I know you want that. I really know you want that, but there's a reason the door has been closed. There's been a delay and you'll understand why. And uh, sometimes what you thought you wanted you, when you find out what spirit has to show you, you know now why, no. I would never, in, ever in a million years, accept that in my life if I had known that. And seeing spirit knew that. So that's why they ask us to be patient, to trust them. And sometimes you close a door. Remember, you guys, a while back, I closed the door and I shut it tight and then I went to close the other door and spirit pushed it back open. And uh, that meant that door, you thought that door was closed, but it's, but it's not. And remember the message that we kept getting about, you know, death shall not take him, something you thought was dead and over, or, or the one that came from the shapeshifter oracles, um, the phoenix, something that you thought was dead and over, suddenly burst back to life. You never in a million years would have thought that that would have happened. 
but that's what happens. So here you think you're going along in this direction and you, fig you think, you know, at first you thought that's what you wanted and then you shut the door thinking, wow, broke your heart. You know, I was wrong. I was wrong. You close the door and then you go to something else thinking this is where you're meant to be. And then bam, you find out the truth of the matter and what you originally closed your door on now all of a sudden is reopened. And that's why maybe yesterday, remember the romance angels, the message was not yet. Just wait. You'll understand why. Because the door was about to open and that person may be involved or that project or whatever it was had no idea that that door was going to suddenly swing open, that they were going to be the ones to open that door again. And so then is the time that you make your move. So when spirit asks for us to be patient, even though we're frustrated, we have to be patient. Um... Romance Angels. Okay. This is me practicing taming the tiger within. <laughs> you know, walking gently with my wild nature. I um, thought that I was, I, I, I thought I was liberal, but I'm not as liberal as I thought I was after watching what I watched. I'm not. And I don't judge other people. You can do whatever you want, but there's certain things I will never do, never be part of. And, uh, I'm entitled to my feelings and you're entitled to yours. And it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It just means it doesn't happen. My son, I love my son with everything in me. He's my son. But he won't speak to me because of my spiritual practices and his religious beliefs. He's an honorable person. He stands in his integrity. He stands up for what he believes in. I taught him that. So I respect that. But he, what I do frightens him. He thinks I work with demons. I don't. I work with angels. But he doesn't. He's taught to believe something different. So it's frightening to him. Even though I love my son with everything in me, I won't go back to that religious organization. And that means I don't have my son in my life. And it's very painful. And it doesn't mean he doesn't love me. And it doesn't mean I don't love him. I know he loves me. He's shown to me in my dreams all the time. And I know he misses me, but oil and water don't mix. And it, it's, it just, it is the way it is sometimes. And it's sad, but, oops, sorry. That just gives you a, a painful example of, uh, of why sometimes things turn out the way they do. You know, it sucks. It sucks for both of us at this time, but... Uh... Anyway, all right, so now I'm going to timestamp this so you guys don't have to stress it. We're going to start at uh, 18 minutes in. Interesting that this is coming here. I, didn't remember, I don't recall having this sit here. So I'm, I'm needing this, I guess, right now because, look, we've got crystal quartz all around us, pure, powerful, clearing. So the first message, where did the little one go? Oh, it dropped behind it's coming from the Vampire Oracle. Sorry, you saw that. Did you? You didn't. Good. I thought I gave you a sneak peek. And this is our Amethyst. Wow. We also, I was also told for myself, and I don't remember if it was for all of you guys, but I definitely was told that um, you're getting exactly what you want, but it's not what you thought. <laughs> it's not what you thought, but it is exactly what you want. It's, and you're going to be really happy. I don't like that reflection because you can see me there and I don't want you to see me. Okay, so let's turn it this way. No, I don't want to turn it that way. Why is it doing that? Okay. Okay, you guys. Primal? Seriously? Why are we getting this again? We need to get up and dance. We need to get it out. We need to move your body. You need to feel the energy within you. Connecting deep, sacred dance, instinct. So I'm not going to go with the typical message. I'm just going to pay attention to going with your instinct. Deep down inside, you know. No one has to tell you. You know what you need to do. You know what you feel. You may not be able to under, uh, explain it. You may not um, even fully 100% understand. 
Like, I will give you an example. Before I saw what I watched in the early morning part of my dreams, I dreamed a few dreams before that. And I know who was in the dream, and it was surprising for me, but it felt really, really good. I don't even recall, and I, I actually, even when I woke up in the middle of the night, I, I didn't even recall, recall enough to write anything down. There was nothing that I could write down, but I knew who this person was being shown to me as, and it felt good. I liked what it felt. I was smiling when I woke up. So that energy is telling me something. I pay attention to that. Pay attention, because it's coming from deep within you. And I'm looking at the skeletons in the background, and I'm not reading this card the way other people read it. I'm just reading it from what I'm getting intuitively. I saw flowers. Do you like flowers? It was a flower headband. Do you like a flower headband? That's what I watched in my horrible dream. And uh, they showed me the person in the dream and, and they called her Pink, like the singer Pink. And I've always had a lot of respect for her. You know, she's different. She's wild. She um, She's had a rough life. She has. She's done things that I would probably never do. But she loves her daughter and she's teaching her daughter how to stand up for herself and be herself and love herself as she is. I like that, I respect that. Um, so this is about connecting deep within yourself and, 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 and having respect for yourself and respect for what your, how your body works and how your body moves and what it feels like to you. And res I'm getting, because of my dream that I'm not gonna go into, respecting another person's body and respecting your own body the way you treat it not not hurting another's body for pleasure not hurting your own body for pleasure it's about respect this is a sacred temple this isn't a temple that you whip and bind and gag and This is, to me, allowing your wild nature to come out, but in a sacred way. Flowers adorning her hair. To me, what I said was that flowers, it looked to me like somebody took a flower pot and stuck it on top of her head. They looked like Easter flowers, is what I heard in my dream. So Easter would represent a new beginning, new birth, rebirth. Do you want flowers in your hair? This is like a death and transformation and rebirth. And it's a celebration of a rebirth. There's so many things that are happening in this, in this card. And spirit wants you to feel your feelings. Sometimes people get lost in the words and they forget the feelings. My favorite little quote that I made up, but it's the truth. She's wearing gold. She knows her own worth. She's comfortable with the way she walks, with the way she carries herself. She walks her walk and talks her talk. She adorns herself with beauty from nature. She listens to the voices of her ancestors. She knows where she comes from. She knows that the past is the past and to let go of the past and is she moving forward into the future. She's had a death of the old and a rebirth of the new. She's embracing who she is and she's celebrating that. She's being celebrated. Close your eyes and go into a dance. Let the music move your body. What does your body feel like as it's moving? What do you think? How are you, what wants to come out of you when you have the music going, whatever, whether it's in your head or whether you're listening to it and you're, you're dancing and you just allow yourself to be free. Like no one's watching, like, like you don't care if anybody's watching. It's a feeling of power, it's personal power and strength and beauty and allowing that energy to move through you. She has a commanding personal presence. She doesn't need to put herself on display. She doesn't use her body to get what she wants. She isn't bait. She doesn't lure people in with her body. 
Her body is used for her own pleasure and for the one that she loves. It's sacred. This is a sacred dance. Separation. Interesting. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. Now, this could be a message that that's actually going to happen. This could happen that you are separating from someone that you felt. Look at her. She's holding on. She's trying to hold on. And he's p p pulling away. Or maybe she's dying. Someone's dying. Or there is a love that's dying. A relationship that's ending. Maybe you found something out like I did. And it's the end of what you wanted. What you thought you wanted. Maybe someone literally is physically dying and they're going to go into spirit. They'll always be with you, but they are leaving this earth plane. So spirits around you, helping you. He's holding on to his heart. It hurts his chest. It hurts his heart. It could be that you have to leave a situation. You've recognized this is toxic for me. And yes, I do love you. Remember the person that doesn't want to be left, doesn't want to leave that life. It hurts my heart. I cared about you but I can't live this way. I'm leaving. That's your lifestyle, not mine. It could be you're, 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 on a, you're gonna have a trial separation. Or it could be that this one has to go away for work, so they're separating between the ones that they love because of work distance. This also could represent that you are, you are in this place now. You are at a distance from one that you love. And while you're in this time period of being apart, spirit is helping you. They, they know how you feel. They know that you're hurting. They could be visualizing one another, right? Not in each other's presence. She's crying at night. She misses him. She's alone. He's holding on to his heart. It hurts his heart. It hurts his heart that he has to be away from her. And so spirit recognizes what you're going through at this time. And they're going to help you deal with whatever it is because it could be temporary, right? Maybe you're going to have a trial separation. You found out information like I found out and I, I don't even want to see you right now. I need to work this through. I, I, I've got to figure this out, right? Maybe something came up that you, you, need to, you need to take some space apart to think about this. And it might be just that you are single. You have nothing to do with a partner. You're single and you're preparing for love in your life at this time. So ask spirit to help you with whatever it is that you need to do. If there's a healing that needs to take place, you know, keep you, your, your mind and energy and time filled with positive, uplifting things while you are apart from your partner, if that's the truth. Or maybe help spirit, ask spirit to help you somehow get to the place that you need. Spirit keeps talking to me about travel and I'm getting ringing in my ear right now. So help me find the means to get to where I need to go to be with my partner. Maybe we need to talk. Maybe we're not, you know, we're not together. Maybe you've been with someone and there was a separation. And you're, you need to talk. You need to come back. He's holding his heart. I'm sorry. This is what happened. She's, I hurt you. It could be this. Or you're going there to where they are. So if the message is very attracted... And you're looking at separation. Sorry. Because there can be a lot of people getting the same message, right? Very attracted and there's separation. So there's an attraction between the two of you. You're, you've been longing for one another. So you be... And, um, I gotta think. You feel each other's energy. There's been a loss. There was a death here. There was an ending here. There was a separation, but the attraction is still very strong. So there may be a reuniting. Isn't that interesting? Even though you're seeing separation. So you'll have to pay attention to the rest of the messages and ask spirit, what else? Because right now there's a clearing that had to take place. All of these are white. I'm also seeing innocence, so that's that's good. There could be have been a misunderstanding 
or maybe somebody needs to come clean, right? Because of all of this, this is all about clearing. This is all of um, pure. Okay, so at 30 minutes in, we're gonna go to the next grouping. And this one is working with, uh, um, well, it's nice that it's upright. Working with, uh, here we've got again, I wish I could remember his name. I've got it in my Facebook in one of my albums, but I have so many albums. This is a special person. This is a, a historical person. But anyway, the seeds of life coming to, coming, you know, something's sprouting. Something's coming to life here. So what we're looking, we're working with here now is the, ooh, that's super cool. I like that. A wave of power. Interesting. When the great wave comes, go to the mountains. The wave is emotion, um, energy, and we're working. This is the the mermaid oracle from uh, what is the author? Lucy Cavendish. Um, so a surge in power, upswing in energy, exhilarating movement. That's positive. I like that. I feel better just doing this reading. Um, just, the, just the energy feels better for me. So that message is for me, even just as I speak to you guys, a surge of power, upswing in energy, because that definitely happened for me. So with this me message, you know, a lot of times spirit says that we are meant to go with the flow. Hold on, I gotta, my computer keeps trying to shut down. Which should be a message to me, right? This? My computer keeps trying to shut down. Why? Okay, so a lot of times spirit says, and you know, we, we are guided to go with the flow at times that we're just supposed to allow the current to take us, right? And then there's times that we're supposed to put our oar in the water and paddle like hell, like the, like the, um, you know, be determined like the salmon jumping up river. Sometimes we're supposed to catch a wave, you know, ride the wave, the great wave comes and, and ride on the back of it and allow it to lift us and carry us. And when we do that, when you ever get to the top of wave, that's a rush, right? It feels good. So if you catch a wave of power, that feels amazing, right? That's, I mean, that's a rush of all rush. There's a lot of people that are, are adrenaline junkies because they like that rush of power. So when this card comes up, it's talking about a great powerful wave of energy that's gathering at this time. And you, you feel it and you see it coming and you go towards it but you got to paddle to get to it. This is going to be, it's going to require, it's like a big wave that you're going to, you're going to go and you're going to catch that wave and you're going to surf it. So it's a big wave. It's scary. It's a rush, but it's scary. And you can't hesitate because if you wait too long, the undertow pulls you back under before you can get up and catch the wave. So you really, really have to exert yourself. That's when the, that's why surfers have such big shoulders and, and muscles they, for, on, their, on their upper arms because from paddling. Notice surfers, they always have little hips and big shoulders because they do all their work with their shoulders and their upper body. So when you catch that wave, you have to balance yourself, right? And you direct your, you move your body to direct you in the direction that you need to go. And it's your choice about which way, which way you're going to go on the wave. Are you going to go to the left? Are you going to go to the right? Where are you going to ride the wave? And you can't waste that time. You can't waste that energy because you've been asking for this. And spirit says, don't let this. This is the opportunity that was coming that spirit didn't want you to, to miss. So when you see that wave, you need to take off and go for it. Seek out the opportunities. And don't watch it. Don't just watch it pass you by. Why would you allow it to pass you by? You have done that many, many times. You've allowed that. You've watched it raise. There it is. Oh, my God. There it is. There it is. Oh, oh my God. That's what I want. That's what I want. But you let it go. But this time, Spirit wants you to catch the wave. Allow it to lift you. Find yourself moving very, very quickly towards the change that you want that you've been longing for, that you've been begging for. This is a triumphant, amazing time. You can surf this wave. This is your wave. This is about you taking this powerful energy that's come to you and directing it in the way that you want it to go. Where do you want to go with the energy that Spirit's bringing to you? I feel it in my, in my heart right now. Go after what it is that you want. Take that energy and say, I know what I deserve. I know what I don't want which makes it really clear to me what I do want. What I watched in my dream, I don't want. And it's guiding me towards what I do want and what I deserve. I know what I deserve. 
So you need to ask yourself, what do you want? What is it that you feel that you really want, that you deserve? Go in that direction. You will be successful because you have the power now. Spirit says, it's here now. Remember yesterday? Not yet. Not yet. Remember they said the Red Hawk would let you know? I am the Red Hawk. I am the messenger. That's my totem. I am the Red Hawk. And now, it's now. Remember I said it could be tomorrow? could be in a few hours? It's now. We had to wait. I had to wait to see what I saw. I wouldn't move in that direction before. There's no way. But I will now. So right now, Spirit wants you to participate and be straight up front. Grab your wave. Grab that power when it gets to you. And when you connect with that power, that is what we were talking about when the spirit of, um, when spirit, destiny, um, vibrational energy, when they all meet, mix and they meet together, that is when you manifest. And so then you say, you throw your rockets of desire out and you say, that's what I want. That whatever is in my highest good, I want that. I want to go there, make it happen, figure it out for me. I want that. And then you let it go and you trust that spirit is going to help you bring it. The number is 42. Could be your age. But the number is 42, so let's, I know that it's going to do with angels and things happening as they're meant to happen, because 4 and 2. But the number 42, the angels are giving you extra, oh no, no, that, no, it's not. They're urging you to keep the faith, okay? Keep the faith. Don't lose it. Don't get scared. Oh, wow, this is gnarly. <laughs> you guys are seeing it already, and I didn't want you to, but I guess it's meant to be seen. Because it's time to choose a different path. That's what I thought after what I watched. It's time to choose a different path. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. This is about disconnecting. This is about going off together if you're as, as a couple or you're even yourself. Bliss. Who doesn't want bliss? Right? I want bliss. I deserve it. I've worked for it. And apparently it's here for me. And uh, I call it in. And that's what Spirit's wanting you to do. Call it in. This is bliss. Allow yourself to have the bliss that you have longed for, that you have never probably had before. Not like this. What it is is a need for you to get away. It's the weekend, right? It's the weekend coming up. So this is about nurturing romantic love. This is about, and it depends on who you're talking about, right? It might mean that you're going away, with somebody else on your honeymoon. Maybe you're getting married. It might be that you're already in a relationship, so you're going to have a romantic date. So you're going to go on a holiday. It could just be the weekend. It doesn't even have to be a day. It could, you know, I mean, overnight. It could just be for the day. But whatever it is, it's a honeymoon. It could be the honeymoon of a relationship. I always talk about that. You know, the honeymoon stage of a relationship when it's fun and it's exciting and it's butterflies and it's new. Because if you're choosing a different path, this is exciting. You just caught a wave. You're, you're, you've got that emote. That's, I feel it. I feel it in my, my heart chakra spinning. It might mean that you're going on vacation and you're going to meet someone when you get there. Well, whatever it is, Spirit's saying, choose a different path. Choose a different path. You know what it means for you. It's time to choose a different path and allow yourself the bliss that you deserve, the romance that you deserve. Romance yourself. It's time to take a, a, a break from work. The time is now. At 38 minutes in, we go to the third pile. And the Black Obsidian Protection Grounding. Divine Circus Oracle. The voice of an angel. My friends are getting ready for Steel Bridge. Song fest right now, playing their guitars. First thing I thought of when I saw that. You see in the background, it, she's got. Um, it's either to me, it's a it's a raven because to me it's magic, and then down below in the right in the right corner, there's another just an image of one. And she's got a song to sing. She's got a song to sing, which means she needs to express herself. She could be he, right? Maybe you're going to express yourself in a song. Remember, I had to tell you I loved you in a song. Maybe you're nervous. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to use your creative expression. So ground yourself. Realize you're safe in doing that. Right? That's what I get from the 
from the Black Obsidian for protection, but you've got something to say and it needs to be expressed. Whether you need to speak to somebody and have a, a conversation that's very important or whether, as I said, there's a song that's inside you that's begging to come out and makes sense with all my friends, you know, getting ready for Steelbridge. Spirit's going to help you do this. And if you don't allow this to come out of you, it's going to block you in other ways. If you don't allow what wants to come out to come out naturally, that's like when you have... Um, we're supposed to feel all of our feelings. Even if we're sad, we're angry, we need to get them out. That's why even if you're furious, you know, write it all down, cuss somebody out and then burn it. Get it out. Whatever it is, it needs to come out. And if you don't, it'll make you sick. It'll make you uncomfortable. It'll make you awkward. You may miss your wave if you don't allow it to come out. If you hold these feelings inside, it can bring on depression. It can literally, seriously make you sick. It, it brings about self-doubt. It, it brings up because when you when you have something that wants to come out and you try to repress it, you start overanalyzing and doubt and lack of confidence and insecurity. All kinds of stuff starts coming up. It attacks your self-esteem. Sometimes we intentionally don't say something and we hold ourselves back because we're afraid about what someone might say, or if we have something like me, right? I. The dream that I saw, it was so lucid. It was so, oh my God. Now, if I tried to say that to somebody and what if they don't believe me, right? What if they don't believe me? But I didn't share what I had to share because I didn't want to hurt somebody and it was, it would have caused a lot of damage. There's a difference. But for you, maybe you feel like if you have something inside and you, it's an idea or a thought that comes to you. Maybe you just have a thought and, and you say, hey, I need to talk to you about this. And like, maybe you got what I got. You got it in a dream. And they're, and you're, you know, you can't prove it, so you're gonna feel like an idiot, but no, it has to come out. Maybe if you have an idea or a plan to do something, you're gonna think, maybe what if they laugh at me? What if they don't think I can do it? What if they, they could do it better than me? I'm not, I'm not skilled at this. But right now, Spirit is telling you, first of all, your intuition is on. You're right in what you picked up. And you are tapping into the universal flow. That's why it's happening. So you're being blessed. If you can't figure out how to express it, if you feel blocked in the way to, to bring it out, Spirit's telling you, we're going to send you a muse. We're going to send you someone to inspire you, to help you find your voice. You're being asked to, to have trust and courage and confidence in yourself and to follow through on whatever the, your, your idea was, whatever your plan was, whatever your song was, whatever your words that you want to say. But right now, Spirit's saying, this is not the time to be quiet. Isn't that funny? A lot of times we're told, don't say anything, be quiet, keep it secret. And right now, they're saying, nope, do not back down. Don't play it safe. Don't hold yourself back. Don't let anyone else talk for you. It's the time that you need to speak now. It's time for you to speak up. Trust that what comes to you in your own thoughts, in your own words, and your own ideas are good. They're good enough. And it might be that you've had this plan or this thought or these words that you wanted to share and you're waiting for the perfect opportunity, but we were already shown that time is now and it's either right in front of you at this second or it's coming really quickly. And whatever you've been planning or whatever you've been thinking or whatever you've been manifesting is going to become a reality. You've been manifesting something into life. You've been dreaming. You've been praying for this. You've been asking for this. You've been working towards this energetically and spiritually, and you are now manifesting this. So you're going to attract the opportunities to bring about what it is that you've asked for, to make this a reality. And if you've already been doing this, you know, I have been working towards it. I've been praying. I've been doing my work. I've been asking. I've been manifesting. You're working, 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 calling it in, calling it in. Well, this is a, a message from spirit that it's going to happen. And whatever way that you are being shown to sing, whatever way this angel speak, speaks, whether it be through work projects, whether it be through a letter, through an email, through a phone call, through a song, through a piece of artwork, through a garden, through whatever the hell it is. It's going to be the way it is for you, the true way for you. 
because it's an expression of your spirit. Now is when you're going to use your voice. And you might be feeling a little bit embarrassed. You might feel silly. You might feel like everyone's watching you. So in order to help yourself, you need to stimulate your throat chakra because this is about speaking up. So it might be that you know something and you need to say something and, and, and it will help clear something up, but it's gonna be awkward for you to do it. Did you see the little hummingbird? You will accomplish what might seem impossible to yourself and others on the move. So stimulate your throat chakra, sing, hum, um, vibrate your throat chakra to open it up. Call spirit to help you. Stimulate it and let, let go of any doubt or shame, embarrassment, anything that has stopped you in the past from saying or speaking your truth. Keep an open mind. <laughs> God, this is so amazing. Because your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. Because remember what spirit told me? You're going to get exactly what you want, but it may not be what you thought it was. Your soulmate, remember this one? I told this story before, and this was someone I knew was looking at me thinking I was nuts, right? This is us getting to know each other. Blah, 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 blah. You may be very shy. You may be very outgoing. There's differences between you. This one doesn't know. Look at the look on his face. I don't know about this. He's a little tense, right? They're all like giggly. But this one knows something that this one doesn't because look, she's got a little chair whispering in her ear. And Cupid's flying amongst, above the top of them. So you may have an idea, you may have had, you may have known with everything in you that, you know, what I thought I wanted was over and this is now the direction I'm going in and then all of a sudden something shifts and it's different than what you thought. It might mean that you have, you know, an idea of what a, a man should be or what a woman should be and what you end up falling for is not what you thought you were going to fall for. This is a message that a possible message, one of the messages, is that you've already met this person, but you've overlooked them. You just looked at them as a friend, or you didn't think that that, that would work out, or that they would like you, or I don't know. There's something that just, there was something there, but it, it, it wasn't what you thought it was initially. And this is also about just keeping an open mind because, you know, people that you get to know could be your friend. And it's always best to show an open mind as far as um, friendships in your life. You want friendships. And, and, and it's always best to start, I mean, for me, I would rather have a, a relationship that's based on a friendship. A friendship's more important. I've said that before. Girlfriends come and go, but friends, they're there forever, right? I'd rather be your friend. I've watched people go, you know, people that I... Um, that I only ended up being friends with. I've watched them go through relationship after relationship, but I've stayed their friend. And I can still go and be comfortable around them and have fun. Whereas, you know, now the ones that they went out with, it's kind of awkward and they go the other way, right? I don't know. Friendship, I, you need to have a friend because when the sex and the uh, romance isn't the high priority, when things are stressful and somebody's sick or you're not doing well, you want your friend with you, right? You want somebody that's got things in common with you. You want someone that you feel comfortable with. Your friend's always with you. They stand by you. They're there for you. They back you up, right? So to have a really good friend, that's a pretty awesome thing. And the message is it's time to let it go. So keep an open mind because what it's time to let it go. What you thought you wanted... It's time to let it go. Maybe it's time to let go of your stubbornness. Maybe it's time to let go of your fear. Maybe it's time to let go of your pride. Maybe it, maybe pride is stopping you from speaking up. It's time to let go of the illusion that you've been holding on to. It's time to let go of something that's, that's, that's done. It's, it's part of your life that's over. And now it's time to keep an open mind. It's time to let go of the struggle 
and allow yourself to draw in what you deserve. Let go of the doubt, let go of the worry, let go of the fear, just let it go. Just say to spirit, my heart and mind are open for what is in my highest and best. And at 50 minutes in, we have our last, oh, wow, check it out, I pick it up. Now that's interesting because this is how I picked it up. So this is how I picked it up. So this is how we're getting it. Interesting, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have picked it up that way. Um, I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to see, because that's the way it was, on the, and I'm going to see which way it turns. So if we get it upright, we get it upright. If we don't, we don't. That's the way it should be. Okay, we do get it upright. And our last, this is um, copper. It's healing. And again, new beginning. And look at the color, carnelian. New beginning, which is what Robin talks about. New beginning. A new spring is upon you. So, last time we got this message, we got it in reverse. So this time, it's the message that you get. I'm getting double confirmation from Spirit right now. So double confirmation on this message. Um, I don't see very many Robins here. Actually, I haven't hardly ever seen a Robin here, but I saw them all the time in Canada when I lived in Canada. They like the cooler country, I think. But I love their little cheeky red shirt that they're wearing and their black tuxedo. Remember I said the power colors, power shirt? This little Robin's got a power shirt. It's passionate. Bursting with pride and love. It's definitely, after a cold winter, the warmth is returning, spring is returning, flowers are sprouting. So the return, the return of something, not only is it a new beginning, but it's a return. So there could be a renewal of a relationship, a, a, an idea, a dream, a project, whatever it is, it's a blessing because it's new birth, N renewal, something positive, happy. The early bird gets the worm. So this is when in your life, new activities come to life. This is a time for you to express yourself. This is a time for you to reach forward, stretch for something, um, extend yourself to other people, to groups, to ideas. And when you do so at this time, when it's upright, you are rewarded. This is working again. And, and this is the energy working. It's, it's time period. It, it's, the frequency is, is in your favor. Little Robin Redbreast. What does he have to say? Little Robin Redbreast. Little Robin Redbreast. <laughs> they wanted to give me a video and I can't show um, videos because they're other people's property. Little Robin Redbreast. Little Robin Redbreast. Where is it? Oh, come on, please don't. Okay. Little Robin Redbreast sat upon a tree. Up went Pussycat and down went he. Down came Pussy and, around, and away Robin ran. Hold on, this is going to probably stop and I, or start out with the volume and I can't let them hear. Okay. Um... Down came Pussy and away Robin ran. Says little Robin Redbreast, catch me if you can. Little Robin Redbreast jumped upon a wall. Pussycat jumped after him and almost got a fall. Little Robin chirped and sang. And what did Pussy say? Pussycat said meow and Robin jumped away. Hmm. This sounds like a cat and mouse game, but it's a bird. So the Robin was there, noticeable. The cat went after the Robin. The robin ran away. Robin said, catch me if you can. And the robin went after him, almost tripped. And the robin sang. And the kitty said, meow. And the robin jumped away. Why? So that's what's happened. That's what's happened. There's been a game. There's been somebody who ran away. 
but there, there's somebody who ran away. But there's a new beginning, a renewal. And the robin is back. The robin ran away. New life returning. Religious factors. Now this is a really interesting um, card. Every time I have seen this particular card, I have read it the same way until I, I listen to someone else's interpretation of it. Oh God, I wrote it down. Hold on. Um, so at first you would say, I mean, clearly your love life is to be influenced by your religious upbringing. Okay. So, um, You may have been raised in it like I was raised as a Jehovah's Witness. It clearly affected my, my belief system, right? Somebody else has been raised in a different type of um, belief system. Some pe people may not have had any religious background. So there's an issue that's causing a problem in your love life. So maybe you are in a family where everybody has to be of the same faith, right? That was what I was raised that way, and that's a problem. It could be that... Um, the culture, there's just cultural differences. Um, it could be, I mean, though, these are the, these are the, um, these are the messages that I always thought about. Okay, well, that's going to be a problem because I grew up with that and I know that, you know, we're not allowed to mix. That's just the way it is. Um, but there's other ways that you can look at this as well, that we are spiritual people right? We are spiritual and our spiritual life is changing. As we ascend, our love life is being affected because our ideas are now changing from what we used to believe. I was a Jehovah's Witness. I was not to be with anyone who wasn't a Jehovah's Witness. I no longer believe that. I have ascended. I have, my mind has been expanding. I've opened up to something different. So I am no longer held back by religious factors. So it could also be showing you that, I mean, depends on this. Sex, okay. You may have a very, um, song. I can't stand losing you. Hold on, it, somebody turned the music up, I lied for a reason. Isn't this sting? I can't stand, all I'm hearing over and over is I can't stand losing you. Hold on. It's the police, which is sting. Okay, so I can't stand losing you. Hold on. This is all a part of it. Um, I've called so many you so many times, and I guess it's true what your girlfriends say, that you don't ever want to see me again, and your brother's going to kill me, and he's six feet ten. I guess you'd call it cowardice, but I'm not prepared to go on like this. I can't stand losing you. I've sent... You my I've seen you I see you sent my letters back and my LP records they're all scratched I can't see point the point in another day when nobody listens to a word I say you call it a lack of confidence to carry on living doesn't make a sense I can't stand losing you I guess this is our last goodbye and you don't care so I won't cry but you'll be sorry when I'm dead all this guilt will be on your head I guess you'll call it suicide but I'm too full to swallow my pride I can't stand losing you that's really sad Really sad considering there's a new spring upon you, right? There's a new beginning. There's a re the possibility of renewal. But maybe your religious factors were what kept you apart. You can't stand losing this person, but your ego, pride, is in the way. Now, sex is also an issue because what if you were raised to believe that certain sexual practices were wrong and, and, you're, and, and one person really, really likes that, that's going to be a problem. Sex. Um, it could be that in my religion, we don't have sex before marriage. That's what it was for me. That's why I was married more than once. <laughs> um, but there is a new beginning. Somebody can't stand losing another person. This is a renewal. This is um, somebody wants sex. Maybe that's the impetus. Maybe that's the rave. I, you know, I want that. I want that in my life. I, and I, ha and I want this. I can't stand losing you. My God, my God. There's so many different messages. A renewal, a new beginning. Somebody needed to sing a song. There was a cat and mouse game. This could also be completely in the opposite. 
Now there is a new beginning. Maybe the new beginning is with someone else because this was a cat and mouse game and all it was for them was sex. And the way I believe, that's not my scene. That's not my, that's not okay for me. I was raised with morals and integrity and honor and I don't have open sex arrangements. I don't swing. I don't do the things that you want to do and I never will. So there's going to be a new beginning for me, but not with you. There's all kinds of things that are happening here. And what needs to happen is a discussion, clearly, right? But there's, there's issues. There's issues in this relationship. So we see Robin Redbreast, who was teasing. He was a tease. That's what he did. He ran, came up, teased, and then ran off. It was just sex. But I can't stand losing you. So it could be we, we were together, we had sex, but because of religious differences, I had to part. I took off, but I can't stand losing you. There's going to be a renewal. However it affects you remains to be seen. All we know is that we all have to say whatever is in our highest good, that's what we're wanting. Maybe you want someone. How about this? This is awesome. I don't want a cat and mouse game. I want someone who believes in the same spiritual life as I, who moves forward, who, who grows, who's interested, who's fascinated on the path, the same path of ascension. I will only, I want sex in my life. I want a commitment in my, I don't want just sex. I want a commitment. I want somebody that is in, in line with me, that has the same sexual beliefs and ideas and feelings and is free and open with me. We have to be on the same path. It might mean that you're going to meet somebody in a place, a spiritual place. It might mean that right now you're with somebody, maybe you're in a relationship and this person isn't of the same um, spiritual belief as you. And so you're incompatible. You're not satisfied. Maybe you're being influenced because of outside because of the family, with friends, you know, it, it isn't even truly what you feel, but it's the influence from others. So Spirit's asking you to call upon them to help you decide what you will allow in your relationship, what you won't, what you're asking for, and what's not acceptable. Maybe the one that you actually are interested in has the same principles that are important for you about sex, Maybe to them, that sex is sacred. And you want that. You like that. And you've recognized that. It's important. Recognize that we can't change another person. And we shouldn't change for another person. But we can positively influence other people by our own example and by our vibrations, by what we visualize by our prayers. Maybe you're having issues with sex in your relationship. My wife's really uptight. You know, this, she was taught this was wrong. And she's uncomfortable with it. So you pray and you ask for help. You want to renew this, your sexual relationship within your relationship. You want to renew this. You want maybe somebody's mind to be expanded and opened up and understand that it's not something to be feared. Maybe you want to explore something in your life and you're having difficulty because of religious belief systems. I told you guys, I'm not a prude, but I'm not way out there either, right? I'm not super experienced, even though I've been married, but, and I'm willing to experiment, but I'm not going to go to the extent that I watched in my dream. It will never happen. Never. I find it disrespectful. So it could be that. Maybe we've had a misunderstanding because something was said or done because I was raised a certain way and you were raised differently and I didn't mean for it to be disrespectful. I respect you. It's just that's how 
I, I'm used to having things be. I'm, I, I was, it was different for me than you. And I'm coming back around. Maybe what happened, you know, it scared me off. I didn't, I didn't know how to handle it. But now, so all we, it all boils down to conversation, right? It all boils down to communication and clarity. And these are all been hanging out with the white, which is coming clean and speaking your truth. And with that, at an hour and five minutes in, I'm calling it a day. I'm going to post this one. I love you guys.